everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new here, I briefly tell you my name is Mel, I'm an Uruguayan neuroscientist and I have this YouTube channel where I interview scientists all over the world. And today's guest is very special, he comes from the island of Mauritius, his name is Krishna, he's in Germany doing his master's studies in the field of how to use meditation in a clinical setting, for example for chronic pain research. He will talk about a lot of interesting stuff regarding this, the effects meditation can have in the brain, so I'm really excited. So hello Krishna, welcome, it's very nice to have you here. Hello everyone, it's a great pleasure to be here today with you Mel. your story. So I am from Mauritius, a very beautiful island on the eastern coast of Africa and I am from a small village called Pointe au Cannonier. One day I came across a book that started talking about uh, thoughts, the mind and consciousness. So since my teenage years then I had this really good uh, question arising why are humans the way they are and what makes them conscious beings? Where are these thoughts arising? So for me, this question became very important and I wanted to start looking at it from the perspective of the brain, how it works and getting closer to my question. So for my A-levels in Mauritius, I was awarded a state scholarship um, to go and study abroad. And um, therefore I did my bachelor's in neuroscience at the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom. And following my bachelor's, I moved to Göttingen in Germany to pursue my further studies. And I'm here, part of the International Max Planck Research School, studying neuroscience. Fantastic. And what kind of areas are you interested in right now? So within neuroscience, what do you do? Yes, after four years of um, experience in the neuroscientific field, discovering from the molecular to the more clinical aspect of it, I am now fascinated and wish to pursue my career in bridging the gap between ancient spiritual practices such as meditation and yoga and modern science techniques, such as, for example, transcranial uh, brain stimulation. And in particularly, I'm in interested with uh, the treatment of neurological diseases. There is a great need nowadays to find more holistic approaches for treatment of diseases, whereby we are not only focusing on changing what's happening in the brain, but also thinking of the whole body. So the whole body as a whole, when we are looking at treatment of brain disorders. I can summarize my scientific interests into two fields. The first one, pain research, and the second, contemplative neuroscience. So why pain? Pain serves a crucial role in our day-to-day -day life and survival. When we are near to our hub and it gets hot, you know, if we touch it by mistake, pain indicates that we are in danger and we will, we will hurt ourselves. However, when pain becomes on a daily basis, staying there all the time and becomes chronic, it can, it can be very debilitating to our daily life. And Unfortunately, pain is found in many of our brain disorders that are there. So, I've always thought that there's a very clear link between pain and suffering. And maybe with these uh, practices such as meditation, yoga, and so on, the patient can still be in pain, but the suffering is less. This is really cool. I mean, I heard about meditation and yoga as relaxation practices, but how can it be applied to these things such as chronic pain? So what is the effect that it has on the body? I think uh, probably a lot of people would like to know this. So what is meditation? So what I'm talking about is mindfulness meditation, which became very famous in science and throughout the world nowadays. Everyone is talking about mindfulness. So mindfulness meditation, it is a training in which we are increasing our attention and awareness of oneself and of the world. So one simple practice is focusing on the one's breath and taking notice of the depth of the breath, the speed of the breath. And then we increase that awareness and attention to include everything through the body, 
be it any sensation, any feelings, any thoughts. But we are observing everything within the body without any judgment, so as it is. So how is that now related to science? How does meditation change our brain and our body? So some studies were interested in the long-term practice of meditation in uh, people who are meditating on a daily basis. So long-term practitioners have reduced feelings of negativity, tension and anger. So, and also there is a higher activity in brain areas which are associated with empathy and compassion. So an interesting study came out and showed that there are changes in a brain area called the amygdala. And the amygdala is involved in evoking the fear response and anxiety. And this is shrinking over time in regular meditation practitioners. And this can be linked for, to therapeutic benefits in diseases such as anxiety disorders and depression. Now, how is meditation research connected to pain, uh, the field that I am interested in? Over the past decades, there have been a lot of studies interested in understanding how the practice of mindfulness meditation can benefit chronic pain patients such as those suffering from fibromyalgia and neuropathic pain. First of all, the way they perceive the pain that they are feeling. Over time, over regular practice, the unpleasantness of the pain is reducing and also the pain intensity in some of these patients. Meditation practices serve as a very good coping mechanism for chronic pain patients as well as it can increase the quality of their life. Wow, that's fascinating. And my next question then would be, what are you working on right now? And also, what is this that you brought us today? Show us. So I'm currently in the lab of Professor Andrea Antal at the University Medical Center in Göttingen. So we are interested firstly in understanding how does the brain work and how we can modulate the activity of the brain by using non-invasive brain stimulation techniques such as transcranial electric stimulation, what I have here, and transcranial magnetic stimulation. We are also currently developing new methods for treatment of diseases such as uh, chronic pain as well as cognitive impairments in old people. Wow, that's really cool. It sounds very promising. And then what is uh, specifically your project? Like, What are you doing right now? So I am currently working on a pilot clinical trial and we want uh, to combine mindfulness meditation and transcranial electric stimulation for the treatment of fibromyalgia patients. So fibromyalgia is a chronic pain disease which affects mostly women and it is a very painful um, condition because apart from the pain which is over throughout the whole body but also coming with sleep disturbances and depression. So this is the setup of the transcranial electric stimulation. So what we are doing, we are applying a low current via the scalp. And through this, we want to change the activity of the brain, uh, especially brain areas that are involved in pain perception. So many studies have already shown that in fibromyalgia, using transcranial direct current stimulation over consecutive days for two weeks is showing uh, therapeutic benefits in patients. So in our innovative uh, and novel pilot study, we are combining mindfulness meditation with this technique, meaning that while they are receiving the stimulation, they will be meditating. The combination really is to lead to longer lasting effects of pain reduction. Wow, that sounds super promising. Like, it so sounds awesome. Like, I'm excited. I want to see the results now. <laughs> I also wanted to use this opportunity to ask you if you have any message that you would like to, to send to our fellow viewers, because maybe they are young scientists, students interested in science, either from your country or from other parts of the world, and maybe they would like to follow in your steps, or is there any message uh, advice that you would like to give them? So first of all, uh, it's very important for us as young scientists to always keep in mind that we want to aim to become a good scientist. But what I mean by that is that one does everything to keep a high standard of ethics in the way they work, but also very good academic integrity. So we are very nice to our colleagues and work together as team because science cannot go forward 
if we just work on our own. It requires working as a team and having this trust and respect to each other within the community. Moreover, it's also very important, in my view, to keep a greater purpose for one's research and one's life. So we should remember that we have a duty towards people and towards the world. And by doing good science, we are actually serving the world. Yes, that was a great message. I totally agree because it's, it's fun and nice to do science, but we also have a duty and responsibility to the people and to the world. So I'm really glad that you brought this, this point into the conversation. But I also wanted to ask you if you have a special message to the people in Mauritius, maybe some students that were in, in the shoes you were at one point. Um, you can also do it in, in Creole if you want. It doesn't have to be English. Un petit message pour tous les jeunes mauriciens mauriciennes qui peuvent écouter moi. Si vous êtes dans la passion pour la science, n'a pas laissé la frayeur en plus de poursuivre une carrière scientifique. Couvrement scientiste à Maurice, nous bien travailler ensemble pour premièrement faire la science accessible à une plus grande audience dans l'île et avec nos sciences, nous capables aider à protéger l'environnement et aussi bénéficier le peuple mauricien. You know, it's funny, but I have three years of French. And I understood what you wanted to say. <laughs> wow, that's cool. I thought I was very rusty. <laughs> so those were all the questions I had for you today. Thank you very much, Krishna, for being here with me. I really appreciate it. It was really nice to hear you. Thank you very much for having me here today on your channel. It's a really great pleasure. And um, a little message to the audience. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for your attention. If you liked the video, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, to put a thumbs up, to leave a supporting comment or suggest other topics that you would like to see. I also have a Patreon account in which you can make a monthly donation if you would like to support this project and bring science closer to the people. And then see you in the next video. Bye bye.